about no one's having it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the Monday, November 13th meeting of the Green Bay Planning Commission. What are your, what's your pleasure regarding the minutes? Move to approve. Second. Any additions or corrections? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Communications none, old business none, new business, item one. Consideration with possible action on a request to authorize a conditional use permit for a rooming and boarding home within an office residential district located at 311 South Jefferson Street, submitted by Pastor Manuelis Riaco. Yes. Confirmation House Incorporated. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a request for a conditional use permit for a rooming and boarding house at 311 <coughs> South Jefferson, which is about two blocks away from City Hall. It's just down the road. Uh, this property highlighted in red here. This is South Jefferson, Stewart. Uh, some of the landmarks in the area include the YW, um, the Green Bay Police Department here, and there's a series of other professional office buildings that are in the neighborhood. There's some attorney's offices and other office uses uh, in the immediate area. Uh, from a comprehensive plan perspective, uh, the comp plan recommends downtown land uses here. The current zoning is compliant with that recommendation and therefore the use is also acceptable. Um, from a zoning perspective, the current property is zoned all <coughs> residential, uh, public institution will cross the way for the uh, police department, uh, and then we're just on the edge of the downtown district here. So this request is to establish a room and boarding house uh, for 10 individuals at 311, and this is the property right here. It's about two and a half stories in height, I think it's probably a former residential property that was converted at one point. It was more recently used as an office uh, facility. Uh, it's a it's on, located on a rather small lot. This access really comes off of Stewart Street um, through these two parcels here uh, through kind of a private drive system with parking in the back. Um, the applicant is from the Transformation House at 436 South Jefferson. Uh, this is going to be kind of a sister use to that. Uh, Pastor Rico can speak to the exact use, but um, it's a limited boarding facility for those who are coming out of 436, which is a shelter facility. And they're able to transition into this facility and then eventually out uh, to another site from there. Um, it is a room and a boarding house. There are certain requirements with room and a boarding houses. I've kind of stipulated some of those that are shown in the zoning code. Uh, they're also regulated by the building code as well. Uh, we asked Pastor Rico to kind of go through a process working with an architect to identify some improvements that will have to be made to the structure uh, for occupancy for those residents. Uh, it will be treated as a dormitory from the zoning perspective. We did notify affected property owners within uh, 200 feet. I only took one call regarding this request. Um, this request does meet the basic standards that are kind of outlined in the agenda. And there are several conditions of approval I can just go through quickly. I did share these with this with Pastor Rico uh, late last week. Uh, the first one is we're going to limit this to 10 individuals. Uh, any expansion will require further plan commission and council review and approval. Um, this approval is for the transformation house, so if it's discontinued or there's another operator, they'll have to come back before the planning commission to uh, get approval. Uh, also in regards to any complaints regarding police calls or inadequate facilities that are provided on site, that also might be a, a reason to uh, pull this conditional use permit or uh, at least have a discussion about the use. Uh, item D is regarding mandatory background checks. And sex offenders who register under this statute uh, will not be allowed to stay at the facility. Uh, in conformance with the submitted operating plan, the uh, applicant did provide a real brief plan of uh, kind of what's going to be going on on site. And there is an on-site manager as well. 
Um, item F is the compliance with all the regulations. That's kind of a standard notation that we have on there. And the site plan will have to be filed for G uh, just to make sure that that is a compliant use and there's sufficient parking on the site. Uh, that's our recommendation tonight. So, Paul, did you receive that an operating plan more than what's in the letter? I, I did not, no. Okay. And <coughs> <coughs> Would that need that? Oh, that's why it is a qualifier here. Right. It must be submitted before they right. can go forward. Right. Okay. So there isn't an actual, as far as the building itself, uh, Pastor Rico's work with an architect. We don't have complete plans yet. This <coughs> is a use approval. We'll follow up with that as part of building review. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Further discussion among the chair would entertain a motion to open the floor. So moved. Second. And a second. Okay. Thank you. Pastor Rico. 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 Yeah. You wish to speak? No. <laughs> We'd love to hear from you if you could say a little bit more about what your operating plan would include. Okay. Um, the, um, <coughs> this house will be um, used for guys that has completed the program and they're just still trying to uh, attain apartments. Um, they're working on their, got guys there, they're in school um, and letting them finish their course. So we, you know, as long as they're really working to uh, improve their, their life standards, we allow them to stay at the Transformation House, but we just want them to take it to the next level. Yeah, so that's what we want to use the house for. I know the, the letter mentions, I believe it does, or at least I picked it, oh yes, the rules, would include no drugs or alcohol to be consumed at any time on the property. Is, are any drugs or alcohol allowed to be kept on the property? Well, um, we, we breathalyze every night uh -huh. and throughout the day and we do drug testing. So. Uh, a person who's using drug, they get disqualified okay. from the program. Thank you. One minute. Uh, were uh, you uh, acceptable with all the conditions that the uh, staff proposed? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve it then. I'll happily second that. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Oh. Do we have any further I, I do. Uh, just a disclosure, I, I think it's appropriate for me to disclose that. My office is at 414 South Jefferson Street, okay. and we uh, I have an ownership in the firm, not the building itself, but I think it's appropriate for me to put that on the record since it's a one-block proximity. Mm -hmm. So, okay. with that being said, I intend to vote in favor of the proposal. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any further discussion? No? There ain't none? We will put it to a vote. All those in favor? Just a second. Can yeah. I ask, is there anybody who wants to speak on the issue? Because we actually forgot to close the floor. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there anybody else? No? Okay. We will close the floor. Okay. 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 Um, all those in favor of the motion? Signal by the saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. Good luck. Okay. Everybody. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item two, consideration with possible action on a request to amend the I-43 Business Center Protective Covenants by changing the land use designation of 926 Erie Road, 1024 Erie Road, and 1028 Erie Road from exclusive office entertainment to light manufacturing, submitted by the Department of Community and Economic Development. Hey, Mr. Chair, this is a request from staff to amend the I-43 Protective Covenants which is also a plan unit development. Uh, this is on the far east side of town. This is East Mason Street, running east and west in Erie Row. This is actually the very end of the business park. Um, this involves three different parcels. Um, one up on the corner here of Erie and Mason, a large tract owned by the city, and then a real small piece down here in the corner. Um, I'm just running quickly through the basics here. Um, so the comprehensive plan recommends, obviously, uh, business park uses here. So the zoning is appropriate. Uh, from the zoning perspective, 
The gray shaded area is a light manufacturing district. Again, this is kind of the limits of the business park. We've got surrounding um, rural residential type of zoning, some real low density uh, uses. So again, uh, from a use perspective, there's a lot of vacant land going on. There are some single family homes to the north, um, but again, to the east, we've got really just vacant farmland. Procter & Gamble, uh, the warehouse is obviously a large uh, user right here in the park. So as I mentioned before, it involves three different parcels. Um, back in 2006, we amended the protective covenants to take this to office entertainment. There was some thought that we could attract a different type of user. Um, since that time, we haven't had any luck attracting that type of user. So uh, we've had interest from uh, manufacturers to go back on that site. So actually in 2015, we amended the uh, protective covenants and we took this back to manufacturing. And we do have, we are working with a manuf manufacturer in the park who's looking at relocating to this site. Uh, and with that said, we'd like to take these other parcels and these other three uh, back to manufacturing, kind of round up the compatible land uses in this particular <coughs> area. Um, so again, this larger tract is one that the city currently owns. We have accepted offers on these other two properties. So this will take this from office entertainment to light manufacturing. So again, we've notified affected property owners, we uh, contacted the alderman and we had no negative feedback. And uh, we recommend approval of the amendment. Thank you. Could you back it up so we can see the different um, zones in <coughs> there? That's what I wanted. Yeah. How about the rest of the salmon colored space there? Besides these particular parcels? I, th I think this is, is actually probably an error on our zoning map because this was already taken care of in 2015. Really? So this should have kind of a gray which would be the manufacturing. Oh, so we're really okay. trying to clean up these other three parcels. So the gray would extend around the two parcels right. that we're talking about. Right. Yeah. And the gray is also light industrial? Light, we call it light manufacturing. Okay. Which the majority of the park is light manufacturing. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the request. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Do we have anybody who needs to speak? No. Okay. I second. We have a motion and a second to approve the request. Any further discussion? Very none. We'll put it to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Aye. Item three. Consideration with possible action on the request to extend a previously approved conditional use permit to construct a pool and pool features located at 3065 Sitka Street that exceed the height requirements of the low density residential district submitted by Joel Erfurth, Mach 4 Engineering and Surveying on behalf of Dan Schmidt, property owner. Hey Mr. Chair, this is a request to extend a previously approved conditional use permit from February of this year and that property is located at 3065 Sitka Street. Uh, this is a rather large parcel here in a large uh, single family use uh, just north of Sitka, adjacent to the Bear Creek Parkway. Um, there is a letter attached from the, um, the applicant that kind of details some of the reason for this extension. Um, I could run through some of the zoning stuff here, but I think it's pretty straightforward. It's really low density zoning. Uh, it's a situation where I don't think the uh, developer had a chance to get to. But the complexity is to build out the way they, they would hope to. Mm -hmm. Kind of ran out of time, so to speak. And uh, Joel and Steve, or Joel can speak to that uh, probably better than I can. But uh, they're simply looking for an extension of that previously approved conditional use um, for one uh, one year period, so they can begin construction early next year, hopefully <coughs> complete uh, sometime next year or the year after. So we're recommending approval of the request uh, for a one year extension of the conditional use permit. Mm -hmm. Am I right, Paul, that there are no changes in the plan? I couldn't see any, but I'm not sure, not apparent. I don't think there's any cha change with this plan. There may be future changes that we're going to discuss with the property owner from a zoning perspective that you might see in a different version. Uh, but I think they wanted to, based on the time, and keep this process going. Sure. So they, they may get a permit on this conditional use. They may not. They may come back with a different zoning platform, so to speak. Okay. Thank you. The chair will entertain a motion to open the floor. 
Second. 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 Okay. Thank you. Joel Erfurth. Hi. Joel Erfurth, Mach 4 Engineering, um, representing Mr. Schmidt. Uh, to answer your question, though, that's the same plan we submitted. Um, is hopefully in that packet information you have is the letter that we kind of outlined. Um, we got a quite a bit later start than we anticipated, um, working through some things. And then as as you can see, if you looking at that site plan, that the right the east or the right hand side of that drawing is where our stormwater management goes. So we're fairly limited. We're trying to back our way out of here, and uh, you know that's a pretty project's good size. So it it doesn't really convey a piece of paper how, how large like mm -hmm. that concrete is, and it's it's stamped. It's got brick inlays. It's very classy, very nice, but takes a long time to do. So they're working their way through because they can only access this site essentially from the, the west, come around the building. So we're trying to back our way out. The summer's weather didn't cooperate very well either with the rain, inch of rain every other day. So um, the coupling of the late start with the uh, you know construction schedule and construction complexity, we're a little bit behind. And the conditional use, we, I believe, runs out in January. So we're just trying to be proactive and, and keep things moving. Um, but uh, that, that is the same drawing you folks saw. We're not asking for any different, just, just a little more time to continue our way out of here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. <coughs> Steve Tethick, do you wish to speak? Um, yeah, the only thing I would add is the architect, Joel, is the civil engineer. Is, um, I'm sorry I stepped out for this phone call, but this building, the Cabana building, will be done um, at the end of January. So that that's a significant building and like Joel says, we're just working our way out the west driveway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Move to close the floor. Second. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Make a motion to approve the extension as requested. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the request. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. Item four. Consideration with possible action on the request to approve a drainage easement discontinuance for parcels located along Marine Way, submitted by Dabble Engineering and Environmental Incorporated. Thank you. Um, so this subject area is on the west side of town off of Military. Um, when this was originally platted, it was done in March <coughs> of parcels, and with that we had a drainage easement that went through the center, kind of where these parcels are divided maybe see it a little bit better here. So there are existing buildings, drainage easement still exists. When a CSM was done about 30 years ago to divide out these parcels, the easement was not carried over because it wasn't required, but it was never abandoned. So there are no facilities, there's no need for facilities. It doesn't actually change anything. All the drainage and stormwater will continue as it is on site. So we are just looking to approve the request as a cleanup action to remove the public easement there. I move to approve the proposal. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This motion carries. Director's update. Council has not met, so there is no update. Mm -hmm. I was going for the record. <laughs> I move adjournment then. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I didn't think so. <laughs> 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 we are adjourned. <laughs>